إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار One of the highest levels of Iman and one of the greatest ways in which to attain the full meaning and the complete meaning of La ilaha illa Allah is when the Muslim knows that they must completely submit all of their affairs to Allah Azza wa Jal. Rely upon Allah, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Have certainty in the statements of Allah Azza wa Jal and in his promises alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is when a person realizes that in this dunya there is no escape from Allah except to Allah Azza wa Jal. There is no protection from the wrath of Allah or the anger of Allah or the punishment of Allah except by turning back to Allah Azza wa Jal, to his mercy and to his pleasure, and to that which he loves subhanahu wa ta'ala. This concept of fleeing from Allah, turning to Allah azza wa jal, it is a concept that is repeated in the Quran and the Sunnah. And it is a principle that was understood by all of the prophets of Allah, and by those who follow them, such as the companions of our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa radiyallahu anhu majma'een. Something you will find being mentioned. And it is something which is important because of the circumstances that we are all going through whether individually, whether within our family life, or whether as an ummah, the oppression and the difficulties that we see around us, when a person realizes that everything that happens is by the decree of Allah, and there is no escape from that which Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed except by turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is one of the most powerful principles that the believer can have and apply. In the Quran, in Surah At-Tawbah, Allah Azza wa Jal gives us an example of this in the Battle of Tabuk. In the story of those three companions that didn't participate in the Battle of Tabuk, Ka'b ibn Umanik and his two companions, Hilal ibn Umayyah and Murar ibn Rabi' radiyallahu anhum ajma'een. These three companions, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left for Tabuk, they had no valid excuse for staying behind, but yet they stayed behind. And it's a long story and a long narration. And it has many lessons and benefits. But when Allah azza wa jal summarizes the story in the Quran, he says subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning these three that when the earth became restricted for them, when they found that there was nowhere that they could go, because for 50 nights the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded that they should be boycotted. No one spoke to them. No one gave to them salams. Even when they came to the masjid to pray, no one would greet them. To the extent that after 40 of those 50 nights, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even commanded their families, their wives, that they should stay away from their husbands. Fifty nights, Ka'b ibn Malik said that I went to the house of the closest of people to me, my cousin Abu Qatada, radiyallahu an, and I gave him salams. And I said to him, Abu Qatada, don't you know that I love Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam? And he wouldn't respond. Wouldn't respond. Asked him a second time, asked him a third time. And eventually all he said to him is, Allah and his messenger know best. Allah and his messenger know best. Fifty nights they went through that. When Allah Azza wa Jal describes this in the Quran, He says that they came to a realization that Allah Azza wa Jal, because of it, He revealed their tawbah in the Quran in verses that me and you recite until Yawm Al Qiyamah. They came to the realization that there is no escape, there is no shelter, no refuge from Allah except by turning back to Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. This was an ordeal and a trial. They came to that realization that they could only escape that difficulty by turning back to Allah Azza wa Jal. Ka'b ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he says in his narration that Allah gave to me eloquence. 
Allah gave to me speech. Had I wished, I could have sat in before the Prophet وسلم, and made an excuse. And I would have been more eloquent than some of those hypocrites that came and made their false excuses. But I knew that even if today I escaped from the anger of the Prophet وسلم, it was only the matter of a short time before Allah revealed my true, my true state to him. He would realize that I was lying. So he chose to be honest. He chose to be truthful. He chose to obey Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as a result, he went through a difficult trial. But because he turned in that difficult trial back to Allah azza wa jalla, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَظَنُّوا أَلَّا مَلْجَأَ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا Then Allah accepted their repentance from them, that they would continue to make repentance to him. Allah azza wa jalla already decreed that he would reveal these verses about, about them that Allah would accept their tawbah, that Allah would forgive them, that this would be a lesson that all of the believers would benefit from. But they came to that realization. Ka'b ibn Malik says that during those, that ordeal of 50 days of boycott, they came to him a letter from the king of Ghassan. Ghassan is a province towards the northern part of Arabia, it was a kingdom at that time. And he wrote a letter because he had heard of the case of Ka'b ibn Malik. He wrote him a letter that was sent with one of his emissaries that said that I know what your companions have done to you, the way they're treating you, this boycott that they have against you. So come to us and you won't regret it. We'll give you, we'll look after you, we'll give you money, we'll provide for you. So Ka'b ibn Malik took that letter, he ripped it up and he threw it in fire. And he said, and this is also a trial from the trials. So when he realized that there was no escape except by turning back to Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal forgave him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his repentance. This concept is one that is repeated in the Quran. Numerous stories of the Prophet of Allah in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, when they mention a principle in these terms or similar to them. For example, in the story of Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, when Allah Azza wa Jal decrees the floods that would come upon the earth. And from those people that refused to embark upon the ark of Nuh alayhi salam was his own son as Allah mentioned subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Hud. And so when Nuh calls to his son and he says to him, come upon this ship, come with me. And he says, no, oh my father, I will go and climb the peak of the highest mountain and that will save me from the floodwaters. How does Nuh respond to him? He says, لا عاصم اليوم من أمر الله إلا من رحم. There is no one that will be escaped from Allah's command on this day except that Allah showers his mercy upon. You can't run from Allah's decree. There's nowhere else that you can go. There is no escape, no, nowhere for you to go, no refuge, no shelter, no protection, except by turning back to Allah Azza wa Jal. And that is the beauty of ibadah. It is the beauty of iman. It is the beauty of tawakkul in Allah Azza wa Jal. When you realize that there is no source of hope, no source of joy, no salvation, no success, no reward, except by turning back to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And that's why we have these concepts in our religion of fear and hope. You fear Allah, but you hope in Allah. You fear Allah's punishment and his wrath and his anger. So what do you do about it? You go towards that which will bring you hope and safety from that fear by turning to Allah's pleasure, by turning to that which is rewarding from Allah Azza wa Jal, by turning to that which is beloved to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. When Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was being thrown into the fire by his own father, his own people, they built a raging pyre. Some of the narrations in the books of Tafsir, they said that they let it rage, that fire, and kept adding fuel to it so much so that when it came to the time to throw Ibrahim salam, they had to catapult him in. Because of the severity, the ferocity, the ferociousness of that fire, they had to catapult him in from a distance. It is said in some of those narrations in the books of Tafsir that Jibreel salam came to Ibrahim salam when he was being thrown into the fire and he said to him, O oh Ibrahim, what need do you have? What do you need? And he said, from you Jibreel, nothing. But from Allah, his help. That is understanding that even in that most difficult situation, you turn back to Allah Azza wa Jal. As Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum has said concerning that verse in Surah Ali Imran, when the people were gathering against the Muslims, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the people said to them, Qad jama'u lakum nas, the people have gathered, so fear them. Fazadahum imana, but it only increased them in iman and they said, Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us. And what a blessed protector. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said 
That is what Ibrahim السلام, said on the day that he was thrown into the fire. And it's what the companions of the Prophet وسلم, said when the people told them to be fearful of the forces against them. Nothing in the dunya can, ha- can, ha- can harm those that Allah Azzawajal protects. No one can stand before Allah's command. No one can come between Allah Azzawajal and his will and his decree. So the believer holds on to that which Allah Azzawajal finds beloved. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you turn to Allah, when you flee to Allah, as Allah Azzawajal mentions elsewhere in the Quran, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى Allah, Flee, hasten, run. Where? Towards Allah Azzawajal. And what are you running away from? From the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From his anger. From that which will incur his wrath. You turn towards Allah Azzawajal. And that is why in so many of our du'as, so many of our adhkar, this principle is one that is repeated. In the stories in the Quran, in the story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, the sorcerers, these sorcerers that Pharaoh came with in order for them to challenge, to battle, to duel with Musa alayhi salam, because he thought that the miracle that Musa was bringing was a form of sorcery and magic. So he gathers his sorcerers, he gathers his magicians, and he comes and he tells them to duel with Musa alayhi salam. And we know the story because Allah mentions it a number of times in his book in the Quran. But when those sorcerers realize that it's no magic, no sorcery, no trick. This is a sign from the signs of Allah Azza wa Jal. They fall in prostration and they declare their tawheed. So Pharaoh becomes incensed and angry and he says to them, how dare you? How dare you collude with Musa and believe in a God that I gave you no permission to believe in? What do they say? They know that what they did would bring them certain death. It would bring them torture. It would bring punishment from Pharaoh. But they said because they realized that even if that's what it leads to, Ultimately, success is that which Allah Azza wa Jal determines. فَقْضِ مَا أَنْتَ قَارْ إِنَّمَا تَقْضِ هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Do as you please, because all that you please can only be done in the dunya. You have no control over anything else. You have no overall control over the heavens and the earth. It is only what Allah Azza wa Jal decrees. And Allah praises them, even though, according to many of the scholars of tafsir, that incident led to their death, led to their crucifixion, led to their end. But Allah Azza wa praises them because they realized at that moment that there was no escape except by turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a concept that the companions understood as we gave in the example of Ka'b ibn Malik radiallahu an. They said that in the time of Umar radiallahu an, as he was going towards the Sham in his Khilafah when he was the Khalifa and there was a plague that was ravaging that part of the world in which a number of the major companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would also pass away from the companions that were settled in the Sham. From them would be Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah and from them would be Mu'adh ibn al-Jabal amongst others radiyallahu anhum. Umar with his entourage from Medina they were going towards that area and when they heard of the plague he decided that he would go back to Medina he wouldn't continue. So Abu Ubaid who had come out before he had been afflicted by the plague, when he came out in order to greet Umar, to welcome him, because he was the general of his armies in Asham, he said to him, Oh Umar, how can you run away from the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal? So Umar said to him, Oh Abu Ubaidah, if anyone had said this other than you, I would have made an example of them. If we run away from Allah's decree, we are only running towards Allah's decree. That is the understanding of this concept. To turn to Allah Azza wa Jal, to believe in Allah, to have trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, to hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what allow the belie- that allows the believer to have that strength of iman, even in the most difficult and trying and challenging of times. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would include these, these words in his adhkar, in his du'as. In the hadith of Al-Bara ibn Azib, radiyallahu anhu in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a dua that you make before you go to sleep. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever makes a supplication as the last thing that they say before they go to sleep at night, if they were to die that night, they would die upon fitrah. They would die upon iman. They would die upon the natural way in which Allah Azza wa Jal had created them. Allahumma aslam tu wajhi ilayk wa fawadtu amri ilayk wal ja'tu dhahri ilayk raghbatan wa rahbatan ilayk لا ملجأ ولا من جاء منك إلا إليك آمنت بكتابك الذي أنزلت وبنبيك الذي أرسلت أو الله I submit all of my affairs to you أو الله عز وجل I submit my face to you and entrust my affairs to you أو الله I give myself over to your protection out of fear and hope of you 
for there is no escape, no protection from you except back towards you, O oh Allah. I believe in the book that you revealed and in the Prophet that you sent. Whoever makes this dua before they go to sleep, the Prophet said that if they die that night, they would die upon the fitrah. Look at these amazing words. Entrust all of my affairs to you. Everything that I have, I do and I give over to you, O oh Allah, out of hope and fear. For there is no escape, no refuge, no protection from you except by turning back to you, O oh Allah. And that is how the believer is. Every single day, their trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, their iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their reliance upon Allah Azza wa Jal, their pleasure in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever is decreed, that is what the mu'min does, it is what the believer does. And these words should be ones that we repeat over and over again when we go through the challenges that we go through and we see the difficulties that we see and we go through the trials and tribulations that Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed as a test for me and you and for others to see how we will respond and how we will behave. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us steadfastness. May Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala keep our feet firm upon Iman. May Allah Azza wa Jal shower upon us the knowledge and the understanding of this religion. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وياكم بما فيهما من الآيات والحكمة أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم لجميع المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد I want to conclude and leave you with another dua of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this time narrated by his wife Aisha رضي الله عنها and collected in the Sahih of Imam Muslim رحمه الله she said رضي الله عنها that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pray during the night قيام الليل and often he would make this dua in his قيام الليل he would say اللهم إني أعوذ برضاك من سخطك وبمعافاتك من عقوبتك وأعوذ بك منك لا أحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أو الله عز وجل I seek refuge in your pleasure from your anger and O Allah I seek refuge in your protection from your punishment O Allah I seek refuge in you from you for no one can praise you as you have praised yourself an amazing dua to seek protection in Allah عز وجل in his mercy in his protection, in his benevolence, in his grace, from Allah's anger, from his wrath, from his punishment. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْكَ وَاللَّهِ I seek refuge in you, from you, meaning in that which you've decreed against me, or in that which you have, in that which you have decreed that will be difficult for me, from your punishment, from your, from your, from your anger, from your wrath. O oh Allah, I seek protection in you, in your mercy, in your worship, in your iman, in that which is beloved to you. So when you know therefore that no one can harm you besides Allah and no one can benefit you besides Allah, that is something which strengthens the iman of the believer, something which gives them certainty and increases them in tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa in Surah Ibrahim, he mentions the story of prophets in general, how their people used to respond to them often with rejection, often with threats of punishment and torture. And Allah azza wa says in those verses twice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the tawakkul of the belief of the of the of the prophets. In Allah, the believers should trust. And then they would say, and why shouldn't the believers trust in Allah when He guided us to this path? He showed you Iman, He told you the straight path. He gave to you the Quran and he gave to you the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why wouldn't you trust in Allah? And we will have trust in Allah despite all of the harms and difficulties that we go through so that those who wish to rely and place their trust, place their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah azza wa jal for an increase in iman, an increase in yaqeen, an increase in tawakkul. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal that He showers His blessings upon us and His mercy and our families and our communities. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal that He makes the affairs of the Muslims easy wherever they may be. That Allah lifts their oppression, their hardship. That Allah Azza wa Jal gives them fortitude and patience and steadfastness. That Allah Azza wa Jal allows us to live upon Iman and die upon Iman and be resurrected with the people of Iman. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun. Wassalamu ala